with you if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, let me start with this. First of all, have you ever been? Have, can you, yeah. Have you ever been a mentor or mentee? And if both, please tell us about it. Okay, well, yeah, it all started in 2020, no, 2017. I was just promoted from marketing director to HR coordinator. And, um, and I kind of rolled both hats. And I remember going to like the third conference in a row and this woman, you know, got on stage and she said, it, you know, her biggest tip was for all of us women was to get a mentor. And she was the third person in a row to say, go get a mentor, girls, go get a mentor, right? And so she was like VP of HR in this giant bank in Nebraska. And so I called her up and I said, um, I would love to bring coffee to you. And she said, okay, cool, right? And I'm, net, I'm a grassroots marketer, y'all. Like I love meeting people, I love connecting with people. Human connection is important to me. And so I took her a coffee and I said, listen, I wanna ask you a question. And she said, what's up? And she said, or I said, um, I am looking for a mentor and I would love for you to be my mentor. And she literally looked at me and she was like, I don't think you need a mentor. And I was like, she said, what makes you say that? And I said, you're the third woman to say, go get a mentor. And I don't have whatever this mentor is and I would like one. And I said, oh, by the way, what, what do you do? How will you help me? What, 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 what can I expect? And she said, okay, I'll absolutely be your mentor. Um, long story short, I met with her for the second time she gave me my very first book. She said, Carissa, what are you reading these days? I said, honestly, I barely passed high school. I can't stand reading. And she's like, okay, I think you just haven't found the type of reading you love. And so she gave me my very first book on HR so that I could kind of step into that role, you know, because I have no formal schooling for any of the stuff that I've done. Um, I'm, I'm just a self-starter. And she gave me my first book, read it in the bathtub in about three hours. I was like, oh, my God, I love reading. And then, this, <laughs> and, uh, and then the second time, she gave me the, my first homework assignment. And my clients will all say, right, I always give them, I task them with action steps so that they have very clear action steps of what to do each week. And she said, I want you to go home and I want you to think of your core vision and your core mission and your core value statement. Because as marketing, we do that for our companies. And I was like, oh my God, that makes sense. And I really started to figure out what my purpose was at that point and what my why was. So, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yes, um, I've been a mentor, I, I mentor, um, PhD students, and um, I have a research group um, where um, researchers, uh, we, we kind of have um, a forum where we just support one another. And um, this was born out of the fact that when I was doing my PhD, I found out that uh, black women like myself, many of them start PhD but never complete it. So that um, birthed um, a burden in me to start a group where I could mentor um, matured women in, in higher uh, education. And it, it's growing, and so what we pretty much do is, it's a symbiotic relationship, if you like, where we learn from one another. So it's all about supporting, it's all about telling women, you can do this. We've got your back, and you can do it. So it's, um, it, it's, it's a mentoring platform, but it's pretty much a give and take platform where we all learn and grow together. And um, over time, I've seen women that felt, you know what, I'm nothing, I'm done with this, I can't do it, just holding hands one to the other and saying, we can walk the road together, we can get there together, if I did it, you can do it. And then just that, and just giving words of affirmation, telling people how to climb the ropes and, and go all the way. And I've seen very many women who were meant to pack up their program, go on to graduate in their program. So it's been great. Okay, have I ever been a mentee? Absolutely, I've actually been both. And so I believe that I was a mentee first. And being a mentee, it's, it's aligning myself with someone that has the blueprint or the strategy that can guide me to success. 
And one of my first mentors was a gentleman by the name of Marshall Silver. He actually was a hypnotist. And he had a program, I will never forget it, it was called The First Million. Anybody was after their first million? Anyone still after their first million, right? Absolutely. And so I said, I have to have that program. And at the time, my account was negative, like $600, let alone paying $6,000 for the first million. So he was one of my first mentors. And I can tell you, investing that $6,000 of borrowed money, did you guys hear me, of borrowed money? Because sometimes you have to do creative financing. Has anyone ever done creative financing before? Don't act like you came here with it all together. Like you've done some creative financing. <laughs> And so that creative financing not just changed my business, it literally changed my life. And speaking of a mentor, I have had the, the, the privilege, the honor to literally be mentored by billionaires. How could that be when I wasn't even a millionaire at the time? And I have been to Necker Island with Sir Richard Branson, and I can tell you it was pristine. Uh, what I learned there was, could only be taken and gleaned from the island. Richard Branson is absolutely amazing. I challenge you to read his autobiography. Being on stage with Donald Trump, I don't care what you think about him when it comes to politics. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the man, the beast, the business icon. Me, being able to be mentored by him, it was unbelievable. And let me tell you something. There's five words that I want you to always ask someone that has something that you desire or someone that you're willing to change places with. When everyone was asking him, Miriam or Carissa, about his stocks, his bonds, and enjoy his real estate, my hand was up for 21 minutes. Yes, my shoulder hurt. <laughs> yes, it was 21 minutes. Can anyone guess what my question was? Anyone? Will you mentor me? Will you mentor me? I want you to to bypass the photo ops. Ask them, will you mentor me? So that was my question uh, to Donald Trump. He called me on stage and patted me on the back like, okay, I don't know who she is, but she's gonna be wildly successful and patted me as in dismissal. And I looked at him and said, well, you didn't tell me where you're gonna mentor me or not. And he said, well, for how long? I said, what about once a month? He goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> He says, I know, you just want to know about my money. I go, sir, I don't really care about your money. Oh, you're the only one who don't care about my money. <laughs> and I said, so will you mentor me? Long story short is I was able to call him and spend that time. So I've been both a mentor and a mentee, and I encourage both of you guys that it has to be a dual role. I, a mentor that is not still a mentee to somebody is, can't not be your mentor. So Miriam, back over to you. Um, and the program that we offer in our, conf in our organization, we have mentorship, obviously. And one thing we do as an organization, we contact our both mentees and mentors. Almost every three months, we send them an email just to follow up and make sure that they are happy, um, they are engaged, or because we don't want this to be another thing on someone's resume that they are mentor. We want to make sure the service is done. We want to make sure mentees and both mentors are happy. And if they are not, we offer them that we can change that, find them another mentor. So that, may, because sometimes, not necessarily those two uh, can be good mentor or mentee for each other. So I want to go back to you. If you can share one thing or let's, three, three words, up to you. Um, what you learn from the mentorship that you was involved? What did I learn? Well, um, it's what got me here today, <laughs> you know? Uh, and I cry because she's, she's near and dear. Our mentee, you know, our mentors are like, oh my God, we remember our first, right? Um, but I remember thinking, this is, this is the type of HR coordinator I want to be. I want to be my team's 
men, you know, mentor, because these are 27 guys who didn't think that they, they just came to work, right? They're like, I just come to work, I collect a paycheck, you're just HR, you're gonna get me in trouble. And I took on that mentor role with them. I got curious about their lifestyles. I was like, how can I help these guys live healthier? Because I know, bottom line, they're gonna come to work happy, they're gonna come to work healthier, they're gonna work harder, be more productive. I was like, it's a win, right? You win, I win. Um, but I would have meetings with each of these guys every week. And at first, our leadership, they didn't understand. They're like, Carissa, I think it's, it's wasting time. And I was like, no, our production is going up. Yeah. And I was like, that's the change I'm, I'm starting. And at the time, y'all, I was about 160 pounds. And I was volunteering then because I was like, I kind of like this thing called helping people. Um, and so I started volunteering then in the gym, being a mentor to all the ladies. And we would meet at a Panera Bread every Sunday. Um, and I would just, we would talk habits and lifestyle. And then all of a sudden these women were getting results. And she goes, you know, you're really kind of good at this. You should go out and be a coach. And I'm like, wait, you get you can get paid to help people? Because, you know, my mentor, I just, I asked, right? And she, she gave her time to me, which now I value way more than money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's what started it. And every time in, in one of my talks, um, Break Down to Break Through, I mention her and I cry because I feel like she, she just opened the eyes. You know, she said, what do you want to do? What brings you passion? And I've never had leadership ask me that. And I was like, ooh, ooh. And then I found my core values. I'm like, damn, okay, I like who I am. And then I just, it's just started evolving and very quick. And she would say, Carissa, all I had to do was like have, just prompt you a little bit. She said, it's been so much fun watching you soar. And five years later, she still comments on everything. She's like, and to think. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so if you want to choose even one word, about her or about oh um, unlocked she unlocked my potential um, in terms of what I learned I think I learned what mentoring is not yeah I learned that mentoring is not counseling mentoring is not therapy as a matter of fact Mentoring is not trying to clone the mentor. So in, in that sense, what I learned in one word is allowing me to be me. Yeah, that's what happened to me when I went through that process. Wow. Let's give it up for joy, yes. Okay, and so what I've learned through the process of both being a mentor and having a mentee is possibilities. Possibilities. Um, oftentimes when we're on our own path, we have no idea of what the destination will look like. And they tell us to enjoy the journey. But human psychology, we're like, well, I need to know where I'm going. <laughs> it's kind of like put in a GPS, like we don't just get out and say, okay, get on the freeway, on the 10 freeway, and I'm gonna give you the address when you get there. You're like, no, I need the address before I start. <laughs> How many of you are like that? <laughs> you know it's gonna be up north, but you're not driving up north until you have that address. And so mentorship has allowed me to know the possibilities, the unlimited possibilities. The, the um, I would say it's, it shows me what's on the outside of the cocoon because that's where we are right now. We're all in a cocoon, no matter how much money we have, how well-traveled we are, how awesome our husbands are. Give it, up for, give it up for her, you guys. She is amazing. Her husband is incredible. And she's a little shy, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, we, we have to give each other flowers, you know, while we're here. And so, Miriam, uh, words for me would be, would be limitless. It would be possibilities. And it would just be um, powerhouse. And the final word would be equipped. We all have a toolkit. What's in your toolkit? You know, I used to have a saying called, whose hands it in? So a tennis racket in my hand is worth like 20 bucks. But a tennis racket in Venus Williams' hand is worth millions. It all depends on whose hands that it's in. And right now, ladies, the mic, 
the opportunity is in your hands. So what are you gonna do with it? Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Joy, you mentioned that what mentorship is not. One of the challenges we had was at the beginning, so many of our mentees thought we are going to find job for them. <laughs> you know, so many people, thought they come because they see a successful woman mentoring them. Uh, they expect the person who can find them a job if they are looking for a job. So we had to explain to them what is mentorship. It's not handing something to you. You know, so um, thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to move into another topic, which is part of our topics. It's, meant, it's about empowerment. Um, how do you feel about empowering other women? How a woman can empower another woman? Um, yeah. I am, I'm sorry, but I do have a bit of a problem with that term, empowerment. Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that empowerment is not given. Um, I don't believe that empowerment is mine to give. I believe empowerment should be seen from the, from the perspective of the receiver. So it's one thing to, to create. We could create the platform to empower people. But we can't empower people. We, I, I suppose there's um, a delicate balance between empowerment and paternalism. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is um, when you put yourself in the perspective of giving, of empowering another, then what you're trying to say, it's almost like it's a benevolent um, relationship benevolent. Mm -hmm. where you're doing the person a favor. And it's, it's a power relationship if you're careful there. Because it's almost as though I've got a power that you don't have. You are powerless, so come on. Let me give you some power so you can be where you are. It's not ours to give. It's yours for the taking, but not necessarily yours, another person's to give. So what I think we are doing as women, to other women, is creating a platform where people can decide to be empowered. I can de you could create um, a nurturing environment for me, it, the onus is for me to, to become empowered. So empowerment is not given. I suppose it's a process. It's about learning. It's about supporting. It's about bringing the best in one another. And like I said before, it's this thing about this symbiotic relationship where, um, where people grow and learn and support one another. You've got something to offer. I've got something to offer as well. We see life from different perspective. Let's bring all our perspective into the pot, roll it together, and we've got a good pot of stew. So I think that is what empowerment is all about. Yeah, define empowerment, I love that. Uh, I feel like uh, empowerment, it's, for me, it's walking the walk. Um, a lot of women come to me and say, you inspire me to want to be better, because if you can do it, I can do it. So when I think of empowerment, I'm like, I just need to be my badass self because then I will, I will show, for, I want to show first what's capable. Um, and so I love when women are like, you, you inspire me, you empower me to want to be a better version of me. And I'm like, yes, then I've done my job. And I don't, I don't, like, I'm not, you know, I'm like, that's my mission in life. But what I love is when I can just be me <laughs> and then that unlocks you to be you and you step into your power. Um, then I get to change generations. That's what I care about, right? My mom passed from obesity and cancer, and so I'm thinking my kids will never know their grandma because she was not ever empowered enough in the health industry, right? She never took it upon that. Um, and so it's just important because I want, if I can change your life, then I can change your kids' life, and then the generations of bad habits, bad health, and that is like generational you know, power. So, um, yeah, I just feel like, if you want to take on the empowerment, start walking the walk, your own walk, right? Like, be like, what's important to me? And I'm just going to go do me. And then every day I will feel a little bit more empowered and more powerful and start in that ownership comes. That it goes back to, um, he said, you know, authentic leadership. Like, just be your true authentic self and you will empower others by doing nothing. Like, you just have to do you. So that's right.
This is funny because I call Joy my sister because I did my DNA and you know I'm Nigerian. You know I'm like I'm not I'm Nigerian, but um, I actually have a similar stance because empowerment is a state of being. It's a state. It comes from the root word power. And I just believe that each and every one of us that is sitting in this room, we have it within us. It's an innate ability. You already have the power. We just don't know that we do. We don't know how strong we are until we really need that strength, when we need that fortitude, when we need that perseverance, that bulldog tenacity. So I believe that we already have it. It's kind of like lighting someone else's flame, right? Um, I believe that we have the power. Some people who have uh, put theirs away and tucked it away or who have lost it or who have allowed it to be taken away, who have stored it away. And I believe for us as women, as badass, powerful women, as superstars, as rock stars, um, all of the above, right? All of those things that we are, we're all are those things just at different stages in our lives, right? And so I believe that when we come in contact with the Miriam, with the Carissa, with the Joy, you know, uh, with the Clara, with the Erica, can you relate, with the Leslie, and with the rest of you, uh, um, with the Rochelle, with the, you know, a Pauline, when we come in contact with those, it's kind of like a spark. It's electrifying when you get in spaces like this. This is an arable land. It's causing all of us to grow and to nurture. And so I'll just say, for myself, I tell my clients, my mentors, and my mentees that if you don't borrow, if you don't believe in yourself, borrow my belief because I believe in you. And that, in essence, is empowerment. Come on, y'all. Give it up for the panel. If, can you share with me? What have you learned? No. What have you learned from this conference since yesterday when we met here? And it can be any sharing, it can be a word, it can be anything you like to share, or if you don't want to share anything, you don't have to. But I, it just, and I didn't have planned to ask that, but I just felt like it's, maybe it's important. So, if you like, anybody wants to start? I think mine's easy, right? <laughs> uh, I learned to go with the flow, right? Um, to, 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 yeah, to rock the first one uh, with no tech, you know, that's, I always tell my clients, I'm like, you have to be ready for anything because I can prepare you with your words, with your tone, your tonality, like how you're gonna grace the stage, but then at the end of the day, hello, we're on, you know, no, no, I'm like, whoa, no, you're just like, what's happening? So I learned to, you know, A, go with the flow, right, preach the Kool-Aid that I'm putting out there for my clients, and, uh, and then that too, you can learn that lesson of like, you're right, I don't need the slides, I don't need this, I don't, like, and in fact, you just come out even stronger on top, because you're like, yeah, I can now. I could do that talk in an elevator if you needed me to. I don't need the prompts. So, um, yeah, giving myself that grace and saying it's okay that it wasn't how I wanted it to go because of the flow, you know, um, and the interruptions. But I was really proud of myself to be able to keep going like that. So. <laughs> I think um, one thing I've learned so far is um, the strength of our story and how powerful that is, and um, uh, in a way, therapeutic that is when we engage with our story, especially in telling our life story, our lived experiences, that um, uh, I could see that from all the speakers. They spoke from the heart, and that kind of resonates with me, the strength of our stories, storytelling. And um, I kind of concluded yesterday that as women, if all we do is tell the world our story from our perspective, not allowing others to tell our stories for us, but we tell our stories ourselves. It's enough to change the world. And whatever we're doing, trust me, ladies, trust me, gentlemen, as well, that what we are doing and what we did yesterday, in a way, is changing the world. Because if you change my perspective and you say something 
that makes me believe that I can move from where I am to where I want to be, that is changing the world. And that's what I took from yesterday, that I can change the world. Okay, so what did I learn yesterday? <laughs> You're so bad, Kirthy. Well, yeah, in, in all sincerity for me, I would say that there's three things that we all can take from yesterday. Number one is Stay ready so you don't have to get ready, <laughs> right? Number two is that no matter what part of the world that we all come from, that we are more similar than we are different. We are more similar than we are different. To have someone get up and talk about a bad relationship, a miscarriage, the lack of finances, insecurities, that is not just for that person in that part of the world or the, their state or their city. That affected women that were in Malaysia, Singapore, Nigeria, the UK. And so ladies, I encourage you that whatever struggle you're going through, and you may not be going through anyone right now at this very moment, you may be sitting on top of the world but the reality is you're either just came out of something, going through something, or getting ready to go into something. That's just life. It's the nature of it. And the final thing that I'll say is that I learned yesterday that my mission, my calling, my commission of global women speakers, of putting women entrepreneurs and position them on stages around the globe to share their messages, to sell their products and their services literally around the globe is where I am meant to be. And I also learned that I have sisters that I can go to Greece, and I can I spend a night in Greece, I can go up Northern California, I can go to Singapore, I can go to Nigeria, like literally I have all these sisters all over the place and I'm a world traveler, so guess what? Make sure my room is ready. Back over to you, Miriam. Thank you, thank you for being so honest. Uh, I asked that question, so I think it's fair for me to also share that. Um, what I noticed uh, yesterday was how judgmental I was. Um, when I arrived here, I was so disappointed in the morning because I was expecting over 100 people. Um, and what I learned, and I shared that on my speech yesterday, by the way, um, that, as I said, the quantity is not as important as quality. And uh, last night, I went to my room and I text my friends um, who are in Madrid right now waiting for me tonight. Um, I text them that um, I had the best day. And I do conferences. I mean, I have met over five, 600 speakers. But the fact that each and every one of you were sharing your experiences with different perspectives, with different um, backgrounds, coming from different cultures. I learned so much. As, an, as I told you yesterday, I want to thank you. And also, it was important for me to catch myself that how judgmental, being judgmental, can close our eyes to possibilities. Because um, I would have probably sit outside and say, oh, OK, whatever, I can check my emails, I can do. But I stay here and I listen. And how lucky I was that I was in this environment with each and every one of you. So I want to thank the organizers. I want to thank all of you for being with us.
Now, if you allow me, ladies, we open it to question and answer. Please. So, I know we don't like to live in regret and everything that has happened to us has brought us to this stage today. But if you could rewind time and talk to your younger self, what is that one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self to help you lean into the person you have become? Um, I would give her a hug and I would say it's okay. I love you, and um, you're a fucking rock star. Um, I think to my younger self, I'll tell her, go girl, don't <laughs> waste a minute. So many days left thinking, am I doing it the right way? Is it wrong? Go for it. If you're wrong, so be it, who cares? Pick up yourself and keep going. So I would say, don't waste a minute. Go for your dreams. The sky is not a limit. You can bust the skies. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Wow. <laughs> Clara, that was a good question for multiple reasons, right? Because we had to go back. You see, you brought out emotion. And so we have to think back to those times when we, we needed the hero that we've become. So sometimes you have to become your own cheerleader, your own hero. And for me, what I would tell myself is that fuck everybody. <laughs> Literally, I would say fuck everybody. Um, because, Go ahead. because here's the deal, ladies. People will tell you, and you know, I had to use, I don't even use profanity, but I had to use that F-bomb for multiple reasons. Um, because I want you to get the exclamation of it. People will tell you that you can't not do something. You would be excited. You would tell someone what you wanted to do, and they're like, that's not going to work. And so you doubt yourself, and you don't do it. And I missed out on being a millionaire at 18. I missed out on being a millionaire at 21. I missed out on being a millionaire at 26. I missed out on opportunities. I missed out on traveling because... Somebody either couldn't afford to travel or go with me, and I didn't want to go alone. So I can say to my younger self, I'll be like, you know what, forget them. Go anyway, you guys. Do it anyway. You don't need anyone to go with you. I am a person who's never met a stranger. I genuinely love people. And I can travel alone and I will come back with a group of friends. People go, where do you know her from? They're like, I just met her. They're like, oh my gosh, I thought you've known her. Tina, you just, yeah, I just met her right now. This is my sister. I'm going to Nigeria next week. <laughs> you know? So that I would say, just F everybody. Can you guys do me a favor and just say, on the count of three, I want you to say F everybody. One, two, three. F everybody. <laughs> And also, I would remember, <laughs> even though we're saying F everyone, I want you guys to remember Nodia. It's a saying that I have, N-O-D-I-A, N-O-D-I-A. No one does it alone. No one does it alone. Oftentimes, I was just, I wanted to do it, and instead of asking for help or polarizing a group of people to do it with me, I did it alone. And I can tell you, it's the American way. You know, and I look at other cultures and I've adapted that because there's a saying that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, if you want to go far, if you want to go far, and we are going together, we are doing big things. I thank each and every one of you for making that investment, that sacrifice uh, for taking away from your friends, your family your loved ones, and the things that you really wanted to do to be here with us at the Wells Conference. The best is yet to come. Thank you. And for me, if I want to say something to 20 years old, Maryam, believe in yourself. Hey. Question. Uh -oh. Question. <laughs> I was asking all the questions. <laughs> A question.
health and the belief system around taking care of yourself. I feel like a lot of women, we take care of everyone else and they never take care of themselves and they know it. You and I, we're in that field, right? I know I need to lose the weight. I know I need to get healthy, but they don't believe in themselves to invest in themselves enough. Um, but I'm a, I'm a believer in sustainable health. So I say F the medications and prescriptions and build a lifestyle of health um, because it can be done. I'm living freaking proof. Um, one thing I would change is the inequality between men and women. Um, I think we've said so much about it. We've been on and on about it, and nothing has changed. If I've got superpowers, I'll just whisk my wing, my, my <laughs> magic wand, and um, there will be equality between men and women, and we'll enjoy a better world. I'm really stumped because there are so many things that I would like to have be different. Like, you said one, so I mean, I really can't say one because I want the healthcare system to be different. I would love for prejudices and hate to be different. I would love for crime to be different. I would love for everyone to be wealthy. <laughs> you know, I would like to get rid of poverty and hunger. And so if I had to choose one, if I could change one thing, in the world, what would it be? One thing. Actually, you know what? I cannot choose one thing. And I've been really known for not conforming, so I'm gonna have to ask you that very same question. Sir, what is one thing that you would change if you could just change one thing? Kind. Kindness, awesome kindness. What about you, Clara? Get your book. What about you, Clara? Clara, what is one thing that you would change? Uh, for everyone to just slow down. Okay. Awesome. What about you, Pauline? What is one thing that you would change living in Singapore and all over the world? What is one thing in the world that you would change? Education. Education. Absolutely. Awesome. What about you, Rochelle? What is one thing you would change? It's okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Erica, can you relate? What is one thing that you would change? Awesome. Leslie, what about you? Wow, I love it. What about you, Vinny? Awesome. What about you, Dr. Judy? Humanity. Humanity. I love it. I love it. Go ahead, you had your hand up. What about you, sister? My Greek sister, you guys. She lives in Crete. She's amazing, I tell you. Spend some time with her. Yes. What is one thing you would change in the world if you could? Right, I agree. Okay, I don't know everyone's name, but I did my best at recalling. Is there anyone that would like to contribute or have something that they would like to share in regards to changing? Yes. Awesome.
Yes, absolutely. And I see somebody in the back with their hand up. Do you mind saying your name? Dr. Zizi. Yes, peace. We're Okay, knock it off. You are not in a pageant. I want world peace. <laughs> Every pageant, I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Dr. Zizi for president. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Non-conformance, I love it. I love it. Anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. Wow, yes. Wow, powerful. All righty, so I'm going to turn the mic back on to Miriam. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for participating. I believe we, we all have something powerful to say yeah. and to share, so thank you. And two things for me, Joy, you mentioned about this. I think everything starts from home. And, and I keep hearing it from everyone. Women supporting women, respecting women equality, um, not being racist, all of those, when you think about it, uh, and I'm talking from my own experience, I was born in a family in Iran. I never forget when I was <clears throat> probably six, seven years old, something, or maybe 10 years old, um, something happened and my parents, uh, my father um, noticed that my brother, younger brother, came to me and yelling at me that, why did you go out and talking to that guy? I mean, the, the neighbor. <laughs> Never forget that. My father called my brother, have a seat here, and then he said, she's your sister. Whatever you have a right to do, she has a right to do. It started from there. Until today, I see exactly equality between me and my brother. He respects women like probably no other men I have ever met. Because we grew up in a family that they taught us to be that way. So all of the things that you ladies mention start from home. And from us, we are women. We are a center of home. We are the center of each family. If we don't teach that to our kids, how can we expect this world to do that and follow that and teach it? It starts from us. So, we are right on time. <laughs> so thank you so much, ladies, for an opportunity. Thank you for your participation. Yeah.